Now, after getting two exceptional episodes last week, arguably the best two of the entire series so far, I was a little worried that the show might uh, kind of go back to formula this week and miss the opportunity to really capitalize off those last two episodes. I was afraid it'd give us some random mission of the week episode instead of showing us the fallout or repercussions of what happened last week. And after reading the brief synopsis for the episode before clicking play and watching it, and seeing that it said something like, the team tackles a tricky mission on a hostile world, I thought, here we go, because yeah, that sounds like just another one of those episodes, one of those that maybe isn't bad or is enjoyable in and of itself, but kind of fails to feel truly significant in any way, that fails to build up what has unfortunately been pretty much the weakest element of the Bad Batch series so far, that being the Bad Batch themselves. But even though, yes, in a way it was yet another random mission given to them by Sid episode, it still managed to carry on from last week to show us the fallout of what had happened, only it didn't do it on the epic or grand scale like I had initially wanted or hoped for, not yet anyway, I'm sure we'll get that, but rather it did it on the personal scale. It showed us what losing Echo has done to the team. And not only did that end up being likely better than going big picture right away again, because we ended up getting actual solid character building and growth for the team, but it also ended up being one of the better episodes of this series so far. And in some ways it ended up being the most Star Wars-like episode of all, because it dealt with one of the core themes of Star Wars, that being love, loss, and letting go. But before getting into all that just yet, let's start at the beginning of the episode, where again, Sid has sent them on a random mission. This time she has purchased an Ipsium mine and wants the Bad Batch to excavate whatever might be left in it. Problem is, the world this mine is on is known for poachers, and the team is a man short, as Tech points out, and they need Wrecker to help inside instead of be lookout, as he usually is. And so Omega then offers to be the lookout all by herself, but Hunter isn't having that, it's too dangerous, he says. So initially, Wrecker and Omega get the role and watch together. And right away we're getting this feeling that something is very wrong with Omega. She is missing that usual upbeat attitude and curiosity that she has. She's barely interested in the planet around her, whereas on pretty much every other mission they go on, she's always wanting to, well, basically to be a kid and run around and look at stuff and explore. Which, you know, oftentimes gets them into trouble too. Anyway, while she's on lookout duty with Wrecker, we quickly learn what is, no surprise, what's bothering her, that of course being Echo leaving the team, but when she brings it up with Wrecker, or to Wrecker, that it's weird that he's gone, he all but kind of shrugs it off and says, you'll get used to it, almost implying it's just part of being who they are, that it just sort of happens, these things happen, and you have to deal with it. Soon enough after this, Omega gets called inside the mine and gets asked to do the critical and rather dangerous job of extracting the small amounts of Ipsium that they found. And while she's with them, Wrecker is outside and he misses someone sneaking aboard the Marauder and flying off with it. This then causes a bit of infighting, mainly between Wrecker and Tech, and they blame each other even though the real problem was not having enough crew members for every job. Again, this is the fallout of losing Echo in many different ways. And it's eventually Hunter who basically shrugs off their ship being stolen and simply asks, where's the nearest town? And though clearly all of them are upset that the ship was stolen, to Hunter, Wrecker, and Tech though, they're more upset that the mission now has changed or has gotten more difficult or complicated, rather than being in any way upset at the loss of their home, as Omega calls it. And when she tries to contact Echo to ask him for help since they're now stranded, turns out his comm is off and the rest of the team, once again, just kind of shrugs it off and says, you know, he's on another mission. In fact, later on, after locating another mine that they have to seek shelter in because there is a storm, that's what Hunter says about Echo leaving in general, that he is on another mission. That's the way they look at it. They don't look at it as losing him like Omega does. They just see it as him being elsewhere and doing something else while they're on a mission of their own. Which I think goes along really well with the whole good soldiers follow orders thing. Here they are, after, in a sense, losing yet another friend, teammate, and basically a family member. This time it's Echo, and before it was Crosshair, of course. And to them, it's just, he's on another mission, not we lost someone we care about. And I think it's kind of fascinating to see how similar, in some ways, the clones' attitude or views are to the Jedi. That, like the Jedi, they don't get attached to anything they just go from one mission to the next and accept that things or people will come and go in their lives. That there's, you could say, no use in holding on to someone or something 
when they are where they belong or feel like they belong. Like how Echo feels like he belongs with Rex doing something more for the other clones now. But Omega is, well, she's very much the Anakin of the story here. She's the one that cannot learn to let go and accept that Echo is where he should be or where he feels he needs to be. And don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying Omega as a child, though technically she's older than the others, that as a child she should just be okay with it, that she shouldn't be sad at the loss of her friend or family member, or also the loss of the only real home she's ever known outside of the cloning facility on Kamino. And speaking of that, I have to say the whole making Omega her own little room on the Marauder, which we saw in an episode last season, it hits a little harder. It's a little more meaningful now. You understand why she is so connected to that ship. And I dare say, this is the first time I could really empathize with Omega. This was perhaps the most interesting the character has ever been, because you could feel her sadness and frustration with the rest of the squad, that they weren't getting why she was upset, or that they just weren't as upset as she was, or upset at all, really, which just made her more upset. Not to mention, you can really see the stark contrast between her and the other clones, that she clearly wasn't, to be blunt, she wasn't programmed to see things the way they do, that everything is a mission to them, and that you have to go with the flow and not hold on too tightly to anything living a life like this. Even though, as we saw in last week's episodes, when Chuchi was telling the clones in the bar that eventually they'd have to move on from being soldiers, that they'd eventually have to let go and find something else to do with the rest of their lives, they very much rejected the idea because for them, that is what life is. Again, the same way for the Jedi, their life is always going with the flow, never holding on too tightly to anything, and doing the mission and fighting for the greater good in the process. Anyway, getting back to it, Omega gets more and more frustrated with her fellow squad members and their attitude, or lack of one, over losing Echo and having their home basically stolen out from under them, until it reaches a breaking point with Echo saying of the Marauder that we can always acquire another ship, it is merely a mode of transportation. He then goes on to say that the squad existed before Echo, it will exist after, which in a roundabout way almost implies the squad could exist without her too, which no doubt stings a little bit. And so it's at this point that Omega says she wants to be alone and just walks away. And this time, yes, both Wrecker and Hunter see that what Tech has said has gone a little too far and upset Omega. They get why she's mad and they just don't feel exactly the same way as her, but they can still recognize it. They then send Tech after Omega, which he's confused by because she said to him, or to them, she wanted to be alone. Which really begins to tell you what the, shall we say, problem is with Tech. That he's both an idiot and a genius at the same time. That he has all this intelligence, all this book smarts, we'll call it, but he can't figure out people for the life of him. Which I think gets highlighted perfectly shortly thereafter, when, after Omega discovers a large pure Ipsium deposit, she asks Tech, before she starts to drill, if he trusts her. To which Tech responds, I am fully aware you are capable of this task. Instead of just saying what she wanted him to say, which was, yeah, I trust you. However, I think that line, after initially maybe frustrating Omega a bit, it begins to help her understand that yes, Tech does actually care and have emotions and all that. He just cannot or does not express them the same way which is what he essentially says to her later on after Omega falls in a hole and Tech jumps in after her without a second thought. And they both are carried away by the underground river. They then have this really good moment where Omega lets him basically know that one of the reasons she's so upset about Echo and the ship is because they are, especially Tech, they are not upset. That they don't care that everything is changing. Tech then goes on to say some very, very Jedi-like things about change being a fundamental part of life, and that, like soldiers, they have to adapt and move on. That what they always do is figure out a solution. And it's moments like this between characters, little one-moment snippets, really, that, as I've said before, the show tends to be missing, get their needed, and do so, so much. I mean, this was a great moment between Tech and Omega, and a great episode for these characters in particular, though the whole Bad Batch really shines, I think. I feel like, though I know what the show wants us to think and feel about all these characters, I can finally actually connect with them after this, or some of them, that there is now a genuine empathy for a character like Omega, and also Tech, that he's aware of the way he is perceived, like someone who doesn't have emotions, that's how people see him, but he very much does have them. 
The episode then ends rather curiously. They, of course, find a way out of the mine and come across the town or spaceport they were originally headed for, but find it abandoned. They then are able to connect with Sid, who at first says she's too busy to help them until Echo points out all they've done for her in the past, and then she says, give me a few days and I'll see what I can do. And when Hunter points out that they don't have enough rations for that long, Sid simply ends the transmission, and it's Omega who's showing signs of her old self again, her old, more cheerful and upbeat and positive self, that parrots what Tech had said earlier about how they'll figure it out like they always do, which even gets a trace of a smile from Tech, and then the episode just sort of ends with them in this abandoned town. Which makes me think the next episode will pick up the story from here and makes me wonder if they'll find out what happened to this town and if that will either somehow lead them back to the stolen marauder or the one who stole it, or if it'll maybe be the Empire who did something here and this will again nudge them a step closer to joining the fight against them. Or maybe it'll just be implied they figured something out like Omega said and when the next episode starts they're already off planet and ready for another adventure. Either way, to start to wrap this up, I have no doubt some people will be disappointed in this episode or call it filler, but to me this was actually a really, really good solid episode that had something that a lot of these um, Mission of the Week episodes do not have, that being heart. I feel like this episode did more for the team, again, especially Omega and Tech, than pretty much any other episode has so far, and though I'm looking forward to seeing more of the bigger picture, I'll happily take more episodes in the smaller scale like this one. I'd also be remiss not to once again say how great the score was, that it added this perfect sense of sadness and weight to the episode. Not to mention visually, this was one of the more striking or better looking episodes. I loved the look of this planet, whatever planet it was, I don't think it got named. So all in all here, another fantastic episode that really felt like Star Wars to me, that really captured some of its core themes and messages. Well, that's all I got for you this time. Now it's your turn to take to the comments below and tell me what you thought of this episode. Was this the perfect follow-up to last week's epic two-parter, or were you maybe disappointed by it? Whatever the case may be, you know what to do. Leave your comment below and let's talk some Star Wars. And until next time, thanks for watching.